welcome back my dear students in this video i will be discussing about insertion of r dna into host cell host organism means it is a e coli and selection of the transformed host cells once the host cells are say once in organism is inserted then the host cells are transformed then there are methods to select transformed host cell so we will just see how the in how the host cell can be made or how the ins, uh, our dna can be inserted inserted into the host cell so this is done by using a the uh, insertion is done by you taking one particular gene of interest say suppose we take one gene of interest like any any gene any foreign gene it is inserted into first into the vector and then into the host so first to obtain suppose we we are taking an example of say bam h1 bam h1 this is a restriction enzyme which is located in the tetracycline resistant gene of this vector pbr 322 so we will discuss this topic taking this example so suppose we are using this particular restriction enzyme and we are inserting any foreign dna it can be an antibiotic resistant gene or any other gene any other desirable dna so when we are using this enzyme bam h1 then this tetracycline resistant gene is lost because this is present in tetracycline resistant gene and in its place in its place we get a desirable dna so this how we can give suppose we are using bam h1 plus we are taking a pbr 322 we are taking pbr322 plus any foreign dna or desirable dna foreign dna or a desirable dna so bam h1 will cut that particular point where there is a tetracycline resistant gene for your uh, information i can give you the diagram beside so here we find tetracycline resistant gene and here also we find there is a location of bam h1 so suppose we are doing using this this gene will be lost on the other side opposite we find here ampicillin resistant gene now foreign dna plus pbr322 which is a vector and bam h1 suppose we mix these three what is the result obtained so here when foreign dna and this is mix and what else is added we can also add the enzyme ligase because the foreign dna and pbr322 must join and where should foreign dna must join if bam h1 is used in tetracycline resistant gene so when we mix this there are two possibilities there are two possibilities so what are the two possibilities one can be a recombinant vector another can be a non recombinant vector N recombinant vector means tetracycline resistant gene is replaced by the foreign dna that is called recombinant vector so recombinant vector we can draw it so here there is a tetracycline resistant gene which is replaced by a foreign gene or a desirable dna or a foreign dna and there is ampicillin resistant gene which is present intact ampicillin resistant gene is intact this is called as a recombinant vector now what is non recombinant vector non recombinant vector is this in this place in the place of tetracycline resistant gene there is no insertion of foreign dna at all that means a non recombinant vector will have the intact tetracycline resistant gene and it will also have ampicillin resistant gene both will be present 
because the foreign DNA is not introduced. Now, these vectors, suppose we introduce the separately into host cells, that is E. coli. Suppose we are introducing these into host cells. Now, we have to select the host cells. Once the recombinant vector enters into the host cell, where there is a foreign DNA, again there are two possibilities of getting the host cell. One we can call it as a transformed host cell and another one is a non-transformed host cell. One is a transformed host cell, another non-transformed host cell. So, here we are having a foreign DNA that means there is no tetracycline resistance at all. There is only ampicillin resistance. So, here transformed host cells they can survive, they can survive in only ampicillin medium. They can survive only in ampicillin medium. If they are non-transformed, if they are non-transformed, the plasmid will not enter at all and E. coli cells do not have any resistance on their own. So, if there is no plasmid entering, say they do not survive, they do not survive in any of the uh, medium, either ampicillin or tetracycline, do not survive in ampicillin or tetracycline, in any of this they cannot survive. That is the if it is transformed and non-transformed. Similarly, the host cell also. Here also, if it is a non-recombinant vector, non-recombinant vector will have both. Again, if they are mixed with host cell, again there is a chance of obtaining transformed host cell, transformed and also non-transformed. Both can be obtained. Here also, if it is transformed, they have both the genes. So, they can survive, survive in both, both ampicillin and tetracycline, ampicillin and tetracycline. If they are non-transformed, they do not survive. Non-transformed will never survive because E. coli cells do not have any the resistant genes of their own. Now, if we observe this result, if we observe this, we can totally eliminate these non-transformed because non-transformed will not survive in any of the medium. Now, suppose we observe the transformed host cell. If we observe the transformed host cell, then we can find those the transformed and recombinant. If they are transformed and recombinant, they are surviving in ampicillin. If they are transformed and non-recombinant, they are surviving in both. That means transformed and recombinant will not survive in tetracycline. So, this ampicillin resistance, ampicillin, ampicillin resistant gene is a selectable marker. It is called as a selectable marker for identifying recombinant for recombinants. So, if recombinants are present due to presence of this ampicillin resistant gene, we can due to presence of this ampicillin resistant gene, we can easily identify and tetracycline resistant gene, tetracycline resistant gene is it is a selectable marker selectable marker for transformants, transformants. So, if tetracycline resistance is present, that means they have undergone event transformation also. But only ampicillin, they, if they are surviving, that means they are recombinants. So, in this way, we can separate recombinant cells and also transformed host cells. So, this method of selecting the host cell by using any antibiotic resistant gene, it will be a very cumbersome process or very tedious process, cumbersome or very tedious process. So, therefore, 
Another method is used for selection of host which is called as insertional inactivation. It is called as insertional inactivation. It is done by using LAC Z gene. This is done by using a LAC Z gene. LAC Z gene will produce an enzyme called beta galactosidase. Beta galactosidase. So, we know in lac operon, this enzyme will break down lactose into glucose and galactose. Besides this, besides this, this also gives color to the bacterial colonies, also gives color, also gives color to the bacterial colonies. So, bacterial colonies where this gene is present, they appear as blue in color. So, therefore, a plasmid containing a plasmid containing LAC Z gene is constructed. All plasmids you know are restructured plasmids. So, plasmids containing LAC Z gene is constructed. Now, this into this region, coding region of Z gene, any desirable DNA or a foreign DNA is added. So, when foreign DNA is inserted into this, say we get a recombinant vector. So, this recombinant vector, when mixed with the host cell, after transformation, all the bacterial colonies, now colonies, will appear white in color because they lose the lag z gene so these will appear white color so that's how we can distinguish recombinants and non recombinants non recombinants will be blue colored non recombinant suppose there is a non recombinant vector present then the colonies will appear as blue so thus by a simple process we can easily identify or distinguish recombinant and non recombinant and this method is called as insertional inactivation so, this is how after the RDNA is inserted into the host cell, we can make selection of the host cell. Now, suppose the host cell is carrying another example we can consider. Another example we can consider. Suppose the host cell, suppose the host cell, this is the third example. Suppose the host cell is carrying the desirable gene ampicillin resistant gene is inserted ampicillin resistant gene is inserted into a vector and into a host into a vector and then into a host and this ampicillin now the host cells are transformed to, they are carrying the ampicillin resistant cells and when this are transformed to the medium containing, suppose these host cells, these host cells are cultured, cultured in medium of ampicillin, medium of ampicillin, medium of ampicillin antibiotic, then what will happen? the host cells will survive host cells will survive host cells will survive and this gene ampicillin resistant gene can be called as a selectable marker so here we are able to select the recombinant host cell also because once the it is able to survive that means this ampicillin resistant gene is able to express itself so, now this ampicillin resistant gene can be considered as a selectable marker, selectable marker. Okay, this is how we can select the transformed host cell. So, with this children, here I will stop. So that you try to understand, I am trying to make a short videos, just to concentrate on the topic and then try to understand so that you can learn part by part. So here I conclude my video.
and in my next video i will i am going to express i am going to explain what is the meaning of a competent host and what are different types of hosts which can be used for the cloning of a vector or for cloning of a specific gene so i conclude my video here thank you very much children by watching and please share to the large number and ask them to subscribe so that more and more videos you are going to get you are going to get updated about more and more videos so thank you very much children